Nvidia says they're not planting back doors. AMD uh, gets a lot of money and they're finally pushing out the 32 gig 9070 XT. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, August 7, 2025. And we're gonna start off today talking about a comment that Nvidia recently made regarding some speculation that's been out there, especially when it comes to US export security and all of those details. There's been a lot of pundit and analytical speculation and skepticism that Nvidia, if they're gonna sell their cards to China, should potentially put a uh, back door in it so that there's a kill switch in case China does something the US government doesn't like you could just switch off all of their graphics cards and Nvidia has come out and just outrightly denied this saying that there are no backdoors in Nvidia chips no kill switches no spyware that's not how trustworthy systems are built and never will be and further elaborating that it's like if you buy a car where the dealership keeps a remote control for the parking brake just in case they decide you shouldn't be driving that's not sound policy it's an overreaction that would irreparably harm America's economic and national security security interests and saying that it's just bad because having any sort of backdoor, even if it's for a good reason, is going to lead to exploitation and bad things happening. And so Nvidia defending that, saying that they are not planning on doing that and that it would just make for their chips to be worse. But they also did this in the same interview where they said Nvidia has always supported open transparent software that helps customers to get the most from their GPU powered systems. So, you know, they can tell truths and lies in the same statement is how I'm sure uh, some of the most skeptical people of it Nvidia are going to respond to that claim, but it's just a reinsurance from Nvidia that everything is moving forward in a way that is safe for people to continue to buy their cards so that they can continue to be worth $4 trillion. And it's not trillions of dollars, but it's probably gonna be more expensive. Noctua and Asus finally announcing their RTX 50 series collaboration, being advertised as the quietest air-cooled 5080 out on the market. And I personally think that this is a nice improvement over the 40 series Noctua cards. I think they've changed it in all the right ways to make it more refined, but also make it look very appealing in terms of the brown and beige color scheme that Noctua has. It might not be something that you want, but we've been waiting for this. There's were teasers that happen at Computex, and now it's been officially shown off by Asus. However, there's no word on release date or price point. If I had to guess, and this is based on nothing besides what Asus is selling their Astral cards for when they're special editions, it's gonna be roughly two grand if I had to if I had to speculate. That's all that is. That is Brett personally speculating. I have no insider information on that. But I have outsider information that Asus is launching another card, their ProArt 5080, which is gonna have wood accents as well. Look at that. They're just going with the brown color scheme overall. This is supposed to be a creator focused card. It's gonna be slightly smaller at two and a half slots, but have a type C port for Type C monitors or various other connectivities that you could do for VR headsets. It's a pretty decent feature to add to a modern GPU. So props to Asus there, but obviously again, price point, we'll have to see what the Pro Art cards come in at. And while Noctua and Asus is a combination that a lot of people like, it turns out that Disney Plus and Hulu is a combination that's just gonna kill off Hulu. With Disney coming out and saying that they're gonna merge Hulu into a single app with Disney Plus sometime in 2026. However, they will be changing up how ESPN works, even though Disney does own ESPN. And so it's it's all a conflation of just, if you wanna watch Hulu for their shows and also live TV, that's now gonna be baked into the Disney Plus app to uh, make it more unified and good, uh, according to them. Let's see if Freeze can unify your wallet to have more bucks in it because you're gonna spend less when you spend it on the deals that he's gonna tell you about. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet, and I'll jump straight into them for you. Starting off today, we have the Amazon Basics Bluetooth and USB speakers with a toggleable blue light for only $9.99, making it $26 off. This is exactly what young Reese would have wanted. But then next up, we have this iROG FE75 Pro. The 75% wireless hot swappable mechanic for keyboard is going for only $26.49, making it $26.50 off. And then lastly, I wanted to bring to your attention again, the NZXT H7 Flow ATX mid tower case is available for only $29.99 at your local micro center if it's still in stock, making it $100 off. But I wanted to bring up this some people have had luck price matching it at their local Best Buys, so give that a try if you want to grab one of these. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, 
I'm gonna hand you back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, turns out that AMD is uh, rolling in the money, just like people use UFD deals because they can save some cash, and they're making a lot of money in a lot of different ways, but not in the best ways possible, according to the stock market. So AMD coming out with their latest earnings report, indicating that they made 32% more revenue than this time last year, which is pretty significant, coming in at $7.7 .7 billion. That is a record second quarter revenue for them, driven by Ryzen and Epic processors and higher semi-custom shipments. When it comes to the client and gaming sector, they showed that gaming made them about $500 million more than this quarter last year, and the client sector earned them about a billion dollars more, with AMD saying that it was driven by record client CPU sales and strong demand for their Radeon GPUs and console gaming products. So you have things like the RX 9000 series launching, you also have things like the PlayStation 5 Pro coming out, which I guess is a, a big enough deal, or PlayStation 5s and Xbox is still selling and their operating margin in the client and gaming sector was 21%, which is a significant uptick from this time last year. However, in the data center, which is where the stock market didn't quite like this, even though their revenue is up $400 million, their operating margin is in the negative. They lost $155 million and it was due to inventory and related charges associated with US export restrictions. So not being able to sell to China definitely hampered their ability to have operating margin in the data center, which is a pretty big deal. This is kind of where Nvidia is currently crushing it. Intel was losing out to them in terms of market share there and it looks like Amy AMD is struggling to have any sort of profit, at least in the current quarter. It might turn around, especially as export restrictions have been changing at a, a little alleviation in certain sectors in terms of GPUs being able to be shipped over there. But AMD doing pretty well, making a lot of money. Losing $155 million in the data center, but making $767 million in the client sector. It looks like AMD has good reason to pay attention to gamers. Theoretically. And one of the things that Dr. Lisa Sue noted was that they had very strong demand for the RX 9000 series GPUs, but they just couldn't keep inventory high enough, which is why uh, there's just nothing out on the market at MSRP making it a little tricky. But I know one of the things that a lot of people want when it comes to AMD's GPUs is more VRAM on what's going on. And the 32 gigabyte RX 9070 XT, also codenamed the AI Pro R 9700, was allegedly launched July 23rd. That was AMD's release date for this card. However, it has appeared basically nowhere. But XFX putting out a promotional material indicating that it should be coming soon to system integrators. This is something that we already knew where they're not gonna sell it discreetly by itself initially. That will happen later in Q3, but this will come for system integrators first. So XFX showing off their AI Pro 9700 right here, which is using an AMD reference design, very similar to Sapphire. However, one of the big things to note here is that XFX is the company that is talking about releasing a pro version of the graphics card, which is not something that reliably or regularly happens. In fact, they tried to do a pretty deep dive to figure out when was the last time this happened, and it looks like it was about over half a decade ago. They had a mining GPU called the BC160, but they also released a version of the Radeon Pro Duo, so back when HBM and HBM2 were still relevant, so kind of when it was Big Navi that was releasing. So XFX trying to have Radeon Pro cards when AMD is making a big push of some kind. And so the fact that they're getting in now on the AI Pro R9700 might be pretty good for people who either want stock or for the prevalence of AMD potentially releasing more higher VRAM cards now and in the future. And if there's more stock, there's more availability, potentially pricing would come down or we're gonna be able to buy it more availably at retail. Who knows how it's gonna play out, but it does look like it's incoming sometime soon. And you guys were outgoing in your messages in yesterday's episode of Hot News. So let's see what you had to say. We got Brian saying, it's crazy how many comments are like, AIM 6 already? Dude, it's six years. Same as between AIM 4 and AIM 5. And AMD is still supporting AIM 4 nine years later. Have you forgotten Intel swap sockets every two years for almost two decades. There, there were a lot of comments of people talking about AM6. I think a lot of it is uh, just, you know, it's not something that they're thinking about, but uh, I think it's more this sentiment like what Rebel had, saying every time I consider building a new PC, there's always new hardware leaks. It makes me unable to enjoy whatever I pick out because I know in six months to a year, there will be something better out. That's why I just stick with PS5 or somebody like Manha saying, I laugh whenever somebody says they're future proofing with Red Slate saying, I mean, my 
future-proof build lasted eight and a half years. It can be done. I think that's the, the general sentiment that I was seeing in the comments was just people being like, I just built my computer. What are you talking about? As we discussed, 2028 is where we're expect 2027, 2028 is where we're expecting AIM-6 to officially come out, which is plenty of time from when AIM-5 came out. 2022 was the release date. Yes, it's been three years since uh, the Ryzen 7000 series has come out, so it's not like it just happened yesterday. But I think that's uh, that's also the, the the sentiment of like, there's always something new around the corner which bugs people. However, there's no such thing as future-proofing, even if Red Slate says that their future-proof build lasted eight and a half years, that's not true. You just had the patience to wait eight and a half years before upgrading. It wasn't that your build was future-proofed, it was that you were able to tolerate the experience that you got for that long. That says more about you as a person than it does about your build, because I guarantee you that the best cards right now, after uh, the cards that came out in 2017, they're significantly better. The 5090 puts the 1080 Ti to shame. Absolutely trances on the 2080 Ti. It's not that you future-proofed, it's that you have great will and resolve to just kind of enjoy what you have, which I think is a takeaway I think a lot of people should have. If you're the type of person who says you can't enjoy it because there's always these leaks, you don't have to watch. That's like part of it is like, if, if it's actually ruining your experience to learn about this new thing that's coming out, then maybe don't consume it, right? Like you don't have to know about these things. You can move into different sectors and your hobby can be enjoying the thing that you have. I personally find it fun to learn about all of the new things that are coming out, having new gizmos and gadgets to look at and it doesn't typically ruin in my experience of a current thing, yeah, unless we're like a couple months away from the launch. Like I wouldn't upgrade to an RTX 4090 when uh, Nvidia told us that the 5090 was gonna come out in January. I would wait because it's officially confirmed. But you know, to each their own and if it uh, ruins your experience, just don't, just don't do it, it's fine. And the commander stretch guy saying, looking at the Steam hardware survey, the majority of active users have eight gigabytes of VRAM and play at 1080p. So the continuation of eight gigabyte cards makes sense. Most people cannot afford these $300 plus cards as well as they cannot afford these new $70 AAA titles. They're playing CS2, Minecraft, Dota, PUBG, Apex Legends, etc. None of the top 25 games and very few of the top 100 need more VRAM. The thing you're missing there is I want more VRAM so they should give it to me and i should have more even if the games that i'm playing don't need it i should have it and i should have it because i want it and i want it because i'm being told that it's better for me even though i won't have a fundamentally different experience if i do have more and we had 12 gig cards with the 3060 what do you mean the 5060 only has eight gigs that's illegal it's fewer number bad worse not good can't do it. It's a downgrade because the number's smaller. And then Mickle saying, I did the sideways upgrade and went from the 7900 XTX to the 9070 XT. I did it for the architecture upgrade. Basically the same performance, but FPS is a little higher even when using ray tracing. And it only cost me $150 since I sold the 7900 XTX before I bought the 9070 XT. I mean, that's something that I probably didn't bring up enough in my commentary yesterday on whether or not it would be worth it is like there is the delta between the new card and the card you currently have is based on the sale price that you could get on the card that you have if you choose to sell it but even still like $150 a lot of people would say for what for uh better FPS in some games worse FPS in others ray tracing who even needs that FSR4 are you kidding me there were, there are a lot of comments to to that effect of just being like the 9070 XT is actually a downgrade uh several other people saying it's an upgrade it was just a mixed bag of comments but if if $150 is worth it for you to get better ray tracing performance hey more power to you it wouldn't be for me. And then Stowen saying, regarding the last part, I once said to myself, if I can't tell the difference, it's not worth the upgrade. And as you said, once you stop looking at numbers, you will know when to upgrade. For my own situation, 5900X on an X570 Tomahawk with 16 gigs and 6800 XT, I guess I'm good to go for another two, three years to play on 1440p with high to ultra. Would it be nice for the GPU to match the 165 hertz of the monitor? Yeah, but it doesn't and it's okay. Since I'm not willing to throw more than 800 euro at Nvidia, I've given up on 144 plus FPS on any AAA title. I'm no FPS hunting shooter player, I'm okay with 80 FPS in Arma, Reforger, and 90 in Cyberpunk on 1440p. I mean, that's what it comes down to is if something's worth it to you, it's based on are you getting the value out of the part that you expected and are you enjoying it? Because honestly, what does it matter if your FPS is higher if the game 
isn't more enjoyable to you, right? That's the takeaway that I, I tend to want to have is does the higher number equal more satisfactory experience? If no, then it's just a higher number, which is part of the problem that we're having with things like frame generation. It increases latency, but gives you a higher number. Is it better? Actually, it's it's a side grade in a lot of instances, and it's a downgrade in a lot of other instances, and it just, it feels like, I, why do I even have this feature for me? I don't want it. I don't want just a higher number. That's not what I'm seeking. I'm seeking to be able to play my video games better like more enjoyable. And if I can't get it more enjoyable by changing something, then I'm just gonna enjoy it the way I have it. That's my thought. And uh, let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. I'll see you back here for more of the hottest tech news, maybe tomorrow.